Hey guys, Mr. Keith back again to talk about the supremacy clause. Um, so just a couple of really quick things about the supremacy clause. The basic premise behind the supremacy clause is that if the states either try to pass a law or make a decision that violates any part of the U.S. Constitution, the state is not allowed to continue enforcing that law. The law is declared null and void. So an example might be if the state of Missouri, for instance, said, um, you know what, in Missouri, we're no longer allowing women the right to vote, uh, which would violate the Constitution. Um, then the Supreme Court, the national Supreme Court would ultimately have to tell the state of Missouri, yeah, you can't do that. Um, and so thanks to the Supremacy Clause, women would be able to vote once again in Missouri, um, which is great. Um, uh, one other term that you should probably know associated with the supremacy clause is the court case that is kind of the court case that is always associated with the supremacy clause, and that's McCulloch versus Maryland. Way back in the early 1800s, um, the state of Maryland attempted to tax the National Bank, which had a branch in Maryland. The national government, which of course was in control of the National Bank, um, refused to pay the state tax. Um, ultimately, the state said, hey, wait a minute, like you got to pay this tax. Like just because you're the national bank doesn't mean you're exempt from Maryland state taxes. And the teller at the bank, a guy last name McCulloch, said, we're not paying a tax. Ultimately, the Supreme Court said that the state did not have the authority to tax the national bank um, and therefore... Um, reinforced or um, ruled in favor of the supremacy clause uh, that the national government, um, in a sense, is supreme to the states. So um, I believe that's all you really need to know about the supremacy clause.